so I went to an auction today and picked up a large box of vintage Action Man stuff. So I thought, let's go through it. So first up, we have these two amazing vintage Action Men. Possibly the greatest two figures that were ever released in the line. Yeah, I'm just joking. So these are two figures I just pulled out of the box. So to give you a bit of a heads up, I paid £130 for this box. And when I saw these two figures in there, it wasn't the reason why I paid for it. So Action Man stuff is going up in price quite a lot recently. Prices are rising quite heavily. And there's some items that are really, really kind of like holy grails for collectors at the moment. Items that were usually quite common to find in the past, but now rise risen in price. So I found this box. These two figures were on top of the box. I was looking through it, and then I realised actually the box has got more in it than it seems. And I think I can make some money on it. Maybe not make total like a massive profit, but at least make my money back. And then let me have a few items for my own collection. And hopefully um, a lot of these items could be taken with me to my um, toy fair that I'll be doing this Sunday at Shetton Mallet. Where I'll be obviously selling them. I'll be selling them at reasonable prices. All my prices are minimum of, you know, 15, 20% less than what they currently are on eBay. And I'm always happy to do deals. But yes, these two figures were the first uh, two I pulled out of the box. They are from 1993. They were released in America first. They are G.I. Joe. And they came in the big blue box and they were sold to the British market as Action Man. And so why this is quite important is so when Action Man kind of ended in 84, 85 period, Action Man was known for its um, amazing articulation. It's based on the Hasbro G.I. Joe toy from 1964. Um, and it's just one of those things where it was the, one of the best toys out there for just for articulation alone. 22, I think it's points of... Um, articulation but then what happened was when G.I. Joe in uh, in the States kind of fizzled out in environment around about 75, 76 um, there, was, there was a big market for 12 inch uh, you know 1.6 action figures but nobody really kind of like filled that kind of mould really and then there was nostalgia because a lot of people were picking up the smaller 3.5 inch figures and then what happened was people started getting a bit nostalgic for the original 60s figures and people were growing up at that point people were having kids and they were buying their kids figures and they wanted to buy their, their kids the figures they had as a kid so Hasbro came up with this idea of re-releasing um, G.I. Joe in the States and so they come up with um, basing it on the actual small figures themselves rather than the actual original G.I. Joe um, but they give them a ministry theme as always and this is kind of one of the, what they come up with on the left you have Duke and on the right you have Stalker um, Unfortunately, there's not much money in these things. Um, they're mass produced. Their articulation is really poor. They do have a cool feature where you can't actually see the joints move because because like there's like a rubbery skin, which is actually not a bad feature. But it, it's that they're very limited and their hands are absolutely massive. I mean, they look like gorilla hands. Look how big they are. Um, which meant all the weapons had to be twice the size of a normal uh, vintage action man, vintage GI Joe. So. I do have a bit of love for this figure on the left, the Desert Storm Duke set, because this is the first figure I ever had as a kid. When it came out in 93, I was five years old, I think, and I can remember getting this set. Um, it came with a backpack, and it came with like a massive gun, which you pressed the button on the side and it made the noise. Um, this is technically vintage by definition, if you can, if you consider anything over the age of 20 years old. Vintage, I mean, this is 25, my mass is terrible, 26 years old. Um, so there's not much value on these, so I paid £130 for everything in this box, which you're going to see now. So these were included. I did recently sell one of these in box for £22, and I know he occasionally can be in demand. So I think if I put the set together as a pair, try list them, that's £20 for the set, and hopefully get my money, some money back on these. Now, let's see what we've got in the box. So there will be a big pile of clothes here to be a bit annoying at first, so I'll be going for everything. Uh, I'll try my best to show everything off. So first of all, we've got this really weird RNG rubbery um, kind of Mac. It looks like it's for the um, like a mountain rescue set. It's not Action Man. The arms are way too small for Action Man. It could be knockoff, which it most likely is. 
it's got a um, lovely orange to it, lovely um, elastic still tight. It could be Cindy or anything like that, or knockoff, some kind of knockoff toy. Um, but that's pretty much worthless. Uh, next up is a piece of black plastic, which I don't think belongs to anything. I can't remember. It could be cut off from maybe. Maybe it's cut off from the parachute for the SES attack set set, but I don't think that's anything. I can't see any holes or anything which kind of show it's like design. I think it's a piece of scrap. Uh, got this lid for the Transpolar Expedition Action Man box. So it looks like it's the lid is fine, but I need to find the rest. Do -do -do. First up, we've got our first Action Man. So he he is a fuzzhead. So he's 1970s. Um, he is not a talker by the looks of it. I don't think he will be. No, he's not. He appears to be wearing the um, basic soldier jumper underneath. He's wearing what looks like to be the British Tommy or maybe the MP outfit. I think it's the Tommy jacket and the trousers and the boots. So I can't obviously see the rest of his body yet. I'll get him unclothed soon uh, and see what he looks like. But see if there's any cracks. He's missing his hand and his hand here is hardened up to the point where the fingers are now snapped off. If anybody clicks Action Man, you'll notice that the... Um, the fingers and the hands get really, really brittle. And when they get brittle, they snap. And there's nothing you can really do about it. They used to be made of rubber and they perish over the time. There are some restoration techniques you can do to try and get this back to being soft. But we don't know if it'll last that long. Um, the hair looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of fluff on him. Uh, he needs a bit, of a bit of a wash. He's been out in the wars for a bit. Generally, he's alright. You can always, to, to clean the hair, what I recommend doing is buying yourself a very cheap toothbrush. Um, go to your local, like, cheap pound store and get yourself a brush. The harder the bristle, or the bristles, the better, because it will pick up all the, like, speck and dirt in his hair and make him really look really good. So I think I can try and get, if I tidy him up properly and give him a nice uniform, maybe, I can probably get about £30 for him. Um, if I really wait for wait on it, I can definitely get 20. So, so far I'm up to about 40 pounds. So I need about 90 pounds more for stock. Next up we have the Navy um, vest. I think it's known as May West. A May West vest. Um, it actually appears to be in quite nice condition. I've sold one of these recently. They sell, they're about 12 pounds worth. They used to be a bit more back in the day, but um, there's a bit of grime there. But looks like his glue that'll come off. Yeah, it will do. Um, yeah, I think these are really cool. Uh, if you ever have any of the sixties outfits, like the like the um, the navy sailor, they always look really good around them. And also, you can also customize it a bit with like a soldier and have it as a bit like a um. You ever seen Saving Private Ryan? You have the people um, driving the um, what are they called landing craft. And they're wearing these sort of things with their caps on and stuff, or their helmets. I think that look pretty cool. That's cool. That's worth, I think that's worth about twelve pound. Uh, next up is a pair of black trousers that have seen better days. We're actually saying that they they might be inside out. They are trousers that are inside out. So they're black trousers that are inside out. I think they are most likely going to be if they are action man more like a vintage. Uh, no, so you got a plastic thing. Uh, these are pretty just rubbish plastic modern things. I thought it might be the Panzer Captain. Next up, we've got the machine gun. A very popular uh, uh, set. Came in multiple sets. Um, you could put it with the Navy um, the Navy vest and have it as like an SA, um, SES. I keep saying SES. A sailor Navy attack set. Um, but if you get the tripod, the tripod's sort of thing that's always missing, really. So you get the... The tripod has like a little clip which basically sits like this, like a little um, hammer, if you will, for the gun to move, um, move up and down. The leg is quite easy to find. That little clip thing is really difficult to find. And it can come to quite a lot of money. So it's always best to try and pick those up complete. And here we have the chest, which goes with the... Transpeller Exhibition. There you go. That's actually quite nice. These um, are from the 60s and they um, 
they look really good. You have them all stacked up in like a display. Um, and they're great for carrying your bits and stuff in. These are not worth that much. I think this is probably worth about five, six pounds on its own. Um, if you get a set, you can obviously ask for more. But I'm glad it's got the, the bottom now. Uh, next up is what appears to be the basic soldier outfit. It's actually quite a nice condition, but the colour is really nice. Um, fortunately, the top button's kind of frayed a bit and come away. But a little stitch can fix that. It definitely says Action Man in there, isn't it? Not G.I. Joe. Yeah, it says Action Man. Palatoy. But, you know, that's worth you know, two to three pounds. It's like I find the matching trousers, it brings the price up because finding these matching their trousers is very difficult. Uh, so this is the gun which goes with the mod the modern figures you saw at the beginning. Um, it's massive. I mean, it's probably the size of like here's a vintage action man. <laughs> you know, it comes and then it comes with his shoulders. Um, it should make a noise, but it doesn't because the batteries are gone. This to me is when action man got you know it, it got a bit silly. The modern action man from the nineties. What happened was when Hasbro released action man again in ninety three properly. Under the branding of Action Man, everything was super sized. Big guns, big cars, big like um weapons. And whilst it still kept a military theme for the um for the first couple of series, first year or so, it had the, and it had a beautiful artwork still, I think. Um the, the design of the toys lost their way and they kind of were a bit more like a um they're a bit more durable. You can throw them around they were hardest kind of hardest to break in some ways. But the problem is when you did break them, you couldn't fix them like you did the old ones. So it's really sad that the night is action man, the ones that I kind of had when I was a kid, were not up to standard and not up to the like just a beautiful craft of the original ones. Anyway, that's not worth much at all. That'll be sold with the um two figures. So strangely we have this little bird, which is nothing to do with action man at all. Anybody recognises who that was from? Give us a shout. It's made of rubber and has like a green effect on the back. I first thought it might be a stamp, but it could be something from like a little toy set. But as for now, we can go my action man collection as one of its one of its creatures. Then we have the um, ah, so here we have the SAS parachute attack helmet, which makes you think that that black piece of canvas might be from that set. It has its original foam, which can be quite difficult to find sometimes, and its original. Visor is a bit scratchy, it's not the best condition, and the sticker has come off a bit. Um, always a bit gunky around here as well, as always. But um, I think he's worth at least six or seven quid on his own. Quite a difficult one to find. Then we've got a small collection of um, just a few bits. So we've got a water bottle ca uh, canteen, which is missing the back bit snapped off. They they used to be, these used to be quite worth quite a lot of money because five, six years ago, the painted head 60 zero actually stuff was the kind of items that everybody wanted and they were, they were going for a lot of money and this is like that sort of period and all of a sudden the price has now slightly dropped and everybody's concentrating on getting on their um their 80s eagle eyes period so those prices are through the roof now and this stuff is dropped out but it's still worth a couple of quid a few more pieces a little weapon and rifle this knife set which comes with an orange knife or an orange blade handle is that what focus in it's marked, I think it's marked uh, Hong Kong. Yeah, it's most likely knockoff. It's worth nothing. Uh, they got like a normal belt. Probably worth two or three quid. Belts can be one of those things where they're either they're worth nothing or they can be worth a hell of a lot of money. The more plasticky ones, ones from ceremonials, always command a good price. But that's, you know, two pound. Pair of binoculars, little grenade. I think this is the um, glove for the Polar uh, Explorer figure. I don't think it's the glove for the um, Dispatch Rider. I get confused between the two. I think the Dispatch Rider one is made, made a more um, kind of like, um, what's it called? Like a suede effect. Then we got these things here. I think there's a, they people call these gaiters. They go against the, um, on the ankles of the figure. These are the ones which are elasticated, which are much better. And what they do is they hold the um, the, the, the trousers against the shoe, really. They look pretty impressive when they're on properly. But the ones that are loose, which are just canvas, are very difficult to put on. They make them look nice. Next up, we have this stretcher. Now, it looks like, unfortunately, it's snapped, which it has here. 
Um, this is made of cam like a plasticky vinyl. Um, so that would have been like that. When you pulled it across, it would have moved out, moved away. Um, and the base cube looked like that. The bottom. So these are. Um, this is what appears to be, I believe, Tommy Gun. Um, it's not worth mega much money anymore. Tommy Gun is is a beautiful um, line of like an action figure from the um, 60s that kind of rivaled action at the time. He's British um, uh, and made by Pedigree. It had the name Tommy Gun. Really successful, and then all of a sudden it dropped off the face of the earth because um, people kind of gave up on the military thing for a bit, and Action Man went with the whole like um, adventurous sets where things like the footballers, for example, or the Red Devil, or the Mountaineer, or the, or the Adventurer, and those are the ones that succeeded. Whilst unfortunately, poor pedigree, Tommy Gunn didn't last, but it did come back in like the late, I think it's like seventies or eighties again. Um, this is not worth that much. I probably put it inside my store for about three, four pound maximum. Uh, next up, we've got this random soldier. He looks like he's from the Civil War, American Civil War. He could be a, where he goes, it's got made in England, which means it's probably made by some like Airfix, most likely. It could be Britons, but I think it's going to be Airfix. He's probably worth nothing, unfortunately. Then we have a couple of weapons. He's worth £2. Another one with the grease gun. Another two pound, very kind of easy pocket money pieces. Whenever you come to my store, if you ever do, um, I try and list all my pieces cheap as I can get them, cheap as I can like I can allow. Really, I'm not there to like rip people off at all. But if I need, but you know, unfortunately, I got to pay for these things. Like 130 pounds for this lot, I need to make my money back. Um, this green uh, spade, this is not the action man one. This is probably Tommy Gun again. Um, of all the Tommy Gun pieces I ever find. This is by far the most easiest to find. It's the um, yeah, it's a cheap spade. It's cheaply made, but um, it looks good on action man. But it still was pretty only two pound. Next up, we got this U.S. N. United Nations. Maybe? Um, I don't know what this is. It's not action man. Um, I don't think it's GI Joe. Anybody out can for me what it is? It looks like it's knockoff. So back in the 60s and the 70s and 80s, they, Action Man was so popular in the UK and G.I. Joe was so popular in America that a lot of companies jumped on the, uh, the bandwagon and started producing their own figures. They were generally cheap blow moulded figures where literally the plastic was blown into a hole and it would make this figure and you pop it together. But unfortunately they were very weak and they would break and they were brittle and they would collapse and they would absolute rubbish. But occasionally they would... Um, They'd also add accessory sets like this. Um, sometimes they'd be rubbish and nobody would want them, or sometimes they'd actually they'd look quite smart. Um, this is not that bad. I mean, there's something similar to it in Action Man, but bright orange just looks, doesn't really look that cool, does it? On the subject of spades, this is the Action Man one. They're usually that handle, which is brown, it's usually scratched to bits and it's usually like a grey colour. Um, Hasbro Hong Kong. So this would have been imported over from the Hasbro line. And it's probably sold all up to the end of Action Man's um, lifetime actually. That's actually quite nice. Usually they're really scratched here and they're missing their paint. Um, that's probably about five pounds. Then we got a support um is it called like a walking stick sort of thing um i believe this is the action man one there's also one with tommy gun as well i actually think the medic sets for action man are some of the best sets they ever did um especially one from the 60s and the one from the early 70s uh it's just they just love you to make i mean i don't know why you anybody kid would really want this when they could have a machine gun or a tank or you know an ses with a you know, like a rope bridge or something like that or why would anybody want, oh, I really want this walking stick action man. But um, I'm glad they've made it because it's, it's a nice set. Only worth a couple of quid. Now, I don't really know what this is. This is not action man. This is a canvasy, um, kind of what's it called, like a um, reserve parachute, if you will. I think this is Tommy Gunn. Now, if this is real Tommy Gun, and I, got, I need to do a bit of research, 
Um, it could probably work with a bit. I mean, some Tommy Gun stuff is quite hard to find. This I don't know. So if it is Tommy Gun, I assume it's worth at least ten pounds. I need to work out and untangle this mess, but that's a nice find of his. Next up, we've got a, a canteen. This is the flat canteen. I think this is the British one. Not worth making much. Maybe two pound. We have a load of a load of um, guns and grenades. And we have our fourth box. Well, our fourth number four. So far, we found one complete. This is the second bit we found. Hopefully, we can find the lid again in this box. But you know, these are worth five pound when they're complete. And now we've got two pieces for the deep sea diver. Um, it goes like that, and the di the actual one's head goes through there, and you put the diving helmet on top. This is a really lovely set. Um, it's not that hard to complete. Um, it's relatively cheap if you buy it in parts, or if you ask about. Most um, collectors and dealers will buy to sell these things quite cheaply. Um, it's probably one of the most popular sets. Probably up there with the German Stormtrooper, the British Tommy, uh, the British Paratrooper, the, the Red Devil, which is a massively famous set. Um, the Deep Star comes with like a white suit. It has like a um, weights that go around it and the helmet. Um, really lovely, really lovely item. Um, so far this is all we found, but I'm pretty sure I've got loads of spares of these, so I could come up with, with a new suit. Hopefully we'll find some more there. Next up we've got the SLR. This is the white version. This is what came with like the um, ski, I think it's ski patrol and Arctic assault and everything like that. Um, yeah, it's worth um, non-broken SLRs are worth about £10 if they have the strap. The white one is worth a bit more because it's a bit more unique. Because it's missing the strap, it's, you know, it's probably worth about the same. They're not, they're not massively in demand, but SLRs that are not broke are. Then we've got a pair of trousers. Now this is a pair of the ones for the, um, I think it's a German staff officer. Um, comes with the bits at the end that pull out. Down there's obviously snapped, unfortunately. But the side bits are what make it. Um, not massively, um, are to find but generally I find that whenever I find these they're in super poor condition these are right these just need an iron and maybe a stitch from the bottom there they're probably worth a fiver next up is what I think is um, the Fonz from Happy Days jacket I bought something similar to this recently I sold it and the customer said no 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 this is not Happy Days I don't really know what it is but I think this is the Happy Days one <coughs> It's got a bit of stitch missing there, so it's probably not worth much. I do have a, like a weird box of Mega figures and bits I've thrown into a big box. Eventually I'll do a figure up and I'll sell them or I'll put them into my own collection. I don't really collect Mega figures which are not part of the Marvel line or the Star Trek line. So this probably will be for sale if anybody wants to buy it. It better be a couple of quid plus postage. Next up, this, which is wrapped up in this little bow. So I know what this is. These are the, you can tell how crusty they are. These are the gloves for the deep sea diver. They are really kind of gross and crusty. This kind of proves that potentially the original set of deep sea diver outfit came with like a really weird uh, inner layer. And what happens is every time it perishes and it comes really crusty and really dusty. I think that's what this is. Um, same again here. But you've got this yellow ribbon which is worth nothing at all. I'll take that off now. But what this is, is the Space Ranger overalls. Um, Space Rangers are very, very in demand. All the buttons are there. It's not that bad condition. It's a bit, maybe needs a bit of an iron, but generally it's all there. Um, this is overalls pretty worth about £10, pounds, not mega rare. But if I can find other bits of these Space Rangers, it's going to make my day because these are really in demand at the moment. Talk of the devil, there's the helmet. And this helmet here came on as part of, I think it's either an international set, or is it the... It's another set, I believe. Where it was sold really cheaply, it was sold with a hat, I think it's like that blue overall, and this helmet. And this helmet, people might know, is actually from the, um, copied directly from the uh, Six Million Dollar Man line. So this is from the set where he basically wears the helmet, and you would look through the back of his head, and you would obviously see what Steve Austin sees. So it's a bit weird that they actually sold this in the Latchman line, but it's probably cheap. They probably have had a thousand of these left over in a warehouse and thought, you know, what the hell, we can buy them 
and with the action man line and sell a few. Ta-da! We are winning so far. It is the lid for the other one. So number four is now there we go. Complete. Let's see if we can find two and three. Next up we have the Tank Commander jacket. Very um, very cool. There's so many different variations of these jackets. Um, dark brown, light brown, black, green, a dark blue I believe. Um, they're all ones that race around the um, around Europe uh, for different lines. Um, not worth making much, probably worth three or four pounds at the most. Then we have the two white boots for the Space Ranger. So far this is looking quite good. I think I probably can get about 15 to 20 quid for these boots, the helmet and the blue overalls. Um, so that's pretty cool. They need a bit of a clean. They always, always really grubby, these ones. But I find the white ones quite a lot. The black ones are the hard ones to find. Uh, and then we got another gun. Next up is the Talking Commander's black beret with its badge. I occasionally find these. They're not that hard. They're, they're very hard to find, I think, with the badge. So I think that's probably worth at least ten pound. Um, as it is, it's a bit dirty. Need to clean. I'll make sure I clean that before I sell it. A little bit of a scratch at the front. Still pretty far hard to find. Then we got the berry for the um, modern um, stalker figure. That makes that easier to sell. We have an ammo box. It's missing the top bit, the handle, which is unfortunate. Ammo boxes sell quite well on eBay, I find. Um, they always make a good scene or a vehicle look good when they're all stacked up. That's worth a couple of quid. We've got a set of keys, which I don't think have anything to do with Action Man. I think they're to do with a child's um, handcuff set. If anybody's getting bored, I do apologise. I'm trying to give you what it is actually like to go through a whole box of um, Action Man stuff the first time. A pair of trousers, nice quality. Um, feel like they're a bit thin. Could be later um, 80s. Or late 70s, probably worth two or three pounds. Um, Black Buried, very, very popular and berry. Came with a basic soldier, came with a tank, tank commander. Unfortunately, it's split at the top, so if it wasn't split, it's worth about eight or nine pounds. I think it's only stands, it's worth about three pounds. Next up, we have, thank God, the diving belt suit for the deep sea diver. It has snapped, which is really unfortunate, but I've got a few pieces anyway. I think I can resurrect that. Also comes with one of the weights that go on the shoes, which makes it basically fall to the bottom of the, the sea. Um, kids would take these in the bath, and that's the reason why. What you did was you have a tube and you blow into it, and the um, action man would sink with the weights on his shoes. Another ammo box. Here's Duke's gun from um, the modern line. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. That would just help it sell, really. Not worth much. We have a life vest. Um, unfortunately, these things are really rubbish. They always fall apart. I don't really know how it's supposed to go. I think it's supposed to be put belts for them like that. Um, no, it's probably worth two pounds or so. They got this little metal thing. It says Corgi Rockets. I first thought it was a base. It was a Corgi Rocket tune-up key. I don't know what that's worth. It could be worth ten, twenty-five, thirty pounds. Work can burn nothing. But that's quite a weird, interesting thing to find in actual lot. Told you it's definitely a 70s actual lot. As always with these um job lots, I do occasionally find these turtle coins. Very popular beginning of the 90s. This one's the April in one. Next up we got some a pair of huskies. This comes with the sledge set, which I can just see peeking out of the box. Um they're worth about five, six pounds each. Um, but with the set set together as just one big set, they can rip a lot of money. So I've never owned this before. I've got a 40th anniversary version. But I'm not a big 40th anniversary fan, but this is a sledge set. So I don't know if it's broken or not. It's got these clips, which all appear to be sealed, still intact. Um, I don't know if that's the, I think that's the front, the back bit there. And it comes with this bit here, which I'm not really sure where that goes. Something like that, something, which gives you that that sort of look. I think not really sure, but um, I've never owned one of these before, and I'm going to keep it in my collection, I believe. Um, I 
I've seen these sell complete up to 100, 120 pounds, 130 pounds, up to 200 pounds with an Axeman, all the Huskies and more had Huskies added on, um, and all the bits. So that's pretty cool find. find. Next up, we've got an Action Man. Duh, duh, duh. This is a 60s talking head Action Man. His hair looks like it. he's seen better days. Um, he's wearing the German uniform with the um, staff officer outfit, which came out in the 70s. So this is the wrong figure for the wrong uniform. He's got the medical outfit band uh, on. He's wearing a backpack, which comes with the telephone and everything, which is usually broken. So that's quite nice. Actually, that's not bad at all. Unfortunately, the strap's a bit loose, but that's a five on its own. Now, the question is, is he a talker? Um, talkers always sell well. You can usually tell the talker because it, it rattles. Um, this one doesn't. Uh, I doubt he will be a talker, but also have a check. No, he's not a talker. So talker would have like um, holes in his chest and his back. Uh, his hair is a bit seen better days. The German uniform is alright though. Um, so he's probably worth thirty pound as himself. The German jacket is worth four or five quid. The trousers are worth three or four quid. The boots are worth three or four quid. That thing there is worth two quid, and the backpack thing is worth three or four pounds as well. So I think I did all right on him. Then we have another husky. It's good to keep getting those of these. The more we get, the better it look. If I get all the sets for the um, pieces for the um, snow sledge, I'll make it up and I'll do a video about it. Then we have another bit of the sledge itself, which I think is the handle bit. Then we got this green net. Now green nets in Action Man are a bit weird. So that some of them came with um, like vehicles to play with the vehicles. Some of them came with um, uh, what's it called? A parachute. The parachute one's worth the most, most money. I'm not really sure what the, which one that is, um, but I'll get some experts to tell me. Uh, then we got some blue overalls. These are probably um, Space Ranger. Yeah, they are by the looks of it. Worth three or four pound, always sell quickly. Now these are some good pieces. So this is a Space Ranger um, Commando Squad set. The gun, annoyingly, I had the cable a couple of weeks back, but I sold it to a good friend. But um, the backpack, yeah, so the cable goes out of this thing here, and it goes into this gun here. But I believe that's about thirty-five pounds worth of stuff there on its own. Always worth picking up Space Ranger stuff. It's going through the roof right now. Next up, we got the white medical box. It's a little bit damaged on the lid, unfortunately, like along here. Um, it's got the top handle, which is good. The bottom bit's really nice. These are usually really badly discolored. I need to get a new hand, uh, a new top bit because this would go for about ten pounds. Um, as it currently stands, it's probably only worth two or three pound. As always with these job lots, you get lots and lots of boots. I really just start selling these in bulk. I never really take boots to the toy fairs because I'm always a bit like, well, everybody's has them, right? But I might start taking a few pairs now because people are always looking out for them. The other diver shoe. We're getting to the scraps now. This is looks like it's some kind of um, detonator set. It's not action moment from what I know. It's cheaply made. It's probably worth nothing. Then we got the um, headphone set for the French resistance with a couple of quid. We've got what appears to be the Tommy Gun medical set. Now with Tommy Gun, they're made of vinyl, so the vinyl always snaps like there. Um, it's got a few pieces in it, should have a look. Cool. So it itself is quite nice. It's a nice little bag. They made them out of vinyl, but because it's so cheap, they all snap. But you could in theory possibly fix this one. I think all the bits are there if you're good at what you don't like storing Tommy gun. Comes with this cool um, medical kit uh, thing which unscrews actually. I didn't realize that. That will help sell it. I'll probably do all the Tommy gun stuff in it as a job lot and get rid of it when in one. Uh, come with like a medical first aid. Do you have a glove? And some more medical armbands. Anybody who waited out, thank you for waiting out. We're getting to the end now. So, some foliage, probably Tommy Gun, looks different than the Action Man one. Landmine, this is definitely Tommy Gun. Another diver bit. Some broken guns. And some Lego. 
with um, Action Man, whenever you buy Action Man from the 60s and 70s and 80s, you always find other toys. Lego's quite popular to find, such as um, always like toy soldiers as well. Bits of Meccano. The Bazooka. And does it still work? Uh, it's not there, but it will very go back and fire. Um, in this condition, it's probably worth two pound. Sad for because I think that's one of the best things Action Man have ever released, actually. And now we're winning again. So here we have the two black Space Ranger gloves. I'm not sure if they're worth what they're worth. Minimum probably ten pound. So that's always good to find those. Then we have the black boots, and there's the other one. Um, these are worth £15 easily all day long. They're quite hard to find, they're very tricky to find nowadays. And most importantly, we have the two pieces that go for the helmet. Now, I think this is the helmet which goes for a hell of a lot of money. One of the Space Ranger helmets goes for about £35, £40. And I think this might be it. If it's not, it's still worth £15, £20 all day long. Um, it's a bit strange really because Space Rangers were really universally hated by action man collectors for a long time. They've seen this kind of like the end of the range and w not what killed it off but the big big step away from the military themed early sets. But still that's a great find. So we got a helmet which is really weird because it's got like an inline bit. I think it's modern or if not it's definitely a um, kind of knockoff. And then we got like a weird sandbag, which I think is Tommy Gun. We got a woody hat. We got a few more pieces in the box, which I'm not going to show. There are black boots, a few knives, nothing worth anything of value. And then this. Now that to me reminds me of um, Terminator. But I can't remember any Terminator figure having this gun from the Keller toy line. So I need to do a bit of investigation to what that's from. Could be worth, you know, a couple of quid. Could be worth nothing. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I know it's a bit boring going for a whole box like this, bit by bit. But it's always fascinating to see what people find in their collections, in their job lots. Have I made my money back today? Well, I think I'll get you know, £30 on one figure, £25 on the other. Um, the sledge is worth £30 on its own. For the pieces, the boxes are worth £10 for, for the, the pair. The huskies are worth £15 for the three huskies. The blue... Um, Space Ranger outfit's probably worth £20. Uh, the, the other one, which is the black and red one, you know, that's worth £15 to £25 with the gun. The helmet, the black helmet, which is this one here, it's probably worth, could be worth £35, £40. If not, it's worth £15 all day long. Uh, the black gloves, they're £15 all day long. So I think I've probably got, with all the other bits as well, about £220 worth of stuff. Um, so if I take out the sledge, it brings the bounce back 140, 150, which means I made my money back and I've also got a free sledge basically. So that's the way to do it. Anyway, I really appreciate you watching these videos. Thank you so much and hopefully I'll make some more in the future. See you again.